My guest today is the official spokesperson to the Nigerian president. He is special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngelale. We have this interview as this administration clocks nine months. It's also happening on the eve of a planned nationwide strike mass action by the Nigeria Labour Congress. It's happening in a time of unprecedented hardship across the country. So I have a lot of hard questions for a jury. We talk about the currency that's in free fall. We talk about inflation that is galloping. We talk about the rising cost of foodstuff. We talk about uh, better edu and emefiele. We speak about Dangote and Bajabia Mela. We talk about the president's handling of the ECOWAS and the exit of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. We talk about all the issues burning in the hearts and minds of Nigerians today. I ask these hard questions, and a jury doesn't. With you. Yeah, I was saying to you before you came in that you know there are people you think you know, <laughs> but then you find actually I've never met you. Yeah, so it's great, it's great to finally meet you. Yes. You're the youngest spokesman to the president, at least since democracy returned. That's that, are yeah. you aware of that? I, I, I have been made aware of that. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Like you said before this interview started, you know Nigerians are living in a time of unprecedented hardship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's incredibly difficult to almost verbalize how difficult things are, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Forget a bag of rice, <laughs> you know, right. 77,000 naira, right. mind blown. Mm -hmm. um, inflation, mm -hmm. you know, according to the MBS at 30%, 29.4%, mm -hmm. I think. The dollar mm -hmm. the, against the naira, mm -hmm. you know, 70%, you know, since May 2023, when mm -hmm. the president took office, by some counts, over 210% since January of 2023 till date. That's right. So people say it's a time of short-term hardship, mm -hmm. and you've said that. Mm -hmm. But for a person whose minimum wage is 30,000 naira, right. how do they survive short-term hardship? How do you tell them that they can and should survive the kind of hardship that you can't even see any way forward from? You know, Trude, this is this is one of the very difficult aspects of uh, working uh, in, in government mm -hmm. is uh, explaining to our people mm -hmm. that uh, we are where we have never been before mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, hardship in the land, uh, when it comes to all of the indices you've mentioned, and how do we, how do we work with our people, convince our people mm -hmm. that we are doing everything we need to be doing now Mm -hmm. to take us all to the future that we seek. I think Nigerians, and this is why I give our people a lot of credit, okay. uh, and uh, before I get into your question, mm -hmm. uh, is that, uh, you know, when M President Bola Tinubu took the decision that um, all prior administrations uh, were unable to take to remove the field subsidy to, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, obviously uh, recalibrate the foreign exchange market in such a way that uh, we are not spending, you know, billions of dollars mm. um, on uh, on you know essentially financing sharp practices in the mm -hmm. foreign exchange markets. Uh, that uh, these uh, very necessary reforms um, have not led to a nationwide shutdown. And I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about you know May, uh, you know, 2023 mm -hmm. or June 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it speaks to the fact that Nigerians had arrived at maybe an unspoken consensus, mm -hmm. that these are things that needed to be done. I don't think there's anyone in Nigeria who felt that uh, subsidizing, uh, you know, billionaires mm -hmm. to take 
uh, imported refined PMS across the border to sell at the actual price, six mm -hmm. times profit for them, that that was a sustainable economic model for, uh, you know, the future development of the country. I think people would much rather see that money invested in health care, agriculture, mm -hmm. education, transportation systems, mm -hmm. uh, and hard infrastructure, uh, not to talk of national security. Mm -hmm. So I think there was a consensus in the country that this needed to be done. And I think everybody understood ab initio that this was going to be hard, that mm -hmm. it was not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. uh, now, with that said, uh, we give credit to Nigerians for appreciating that this needed to be done mm -hmm. and enduring the pain of the outcome uh, to get us to this point. Now, the question is, what is the payoff, right? If you are uh, taking this out, if you are uh, putting a, 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 an entire population uh, out of necessity, we agree it's necessary, mm -hmm. but you're, you're, you're putting a population in a difficult situation with this reform effort, mm -hmm. What are Nigerians going to get out of that? And mm -hmm. I think that's what uh, we should speak to. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the fact that His Excellency, Mr. President, uh, campaigned on a promise to do what uh, has never been done in national history, which is to uh, introduce a consumer credit system for the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what is, the, what is the nexus between this consumer credit system and the hardship that we're facing? I want to be very practical about this for our viewers. Because mm -hmm. my, my father had a policy, you know, you mentioned my father earlier. My yeah. father was a very interesting person, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, and I don't mean to digress, mm -hmm. but he was someone who believed that whatever I've achieved in my life has no bearing on what you will achieve. Meaning, if I've achieved some level of success, mm -hmm. just because you're my son doesn't mean you're going to take my success. Mm -hmm. He forced me to pay for my entire university education, even though he could have financed it. I had to work through school, I had to pay my own tuition uh, in an American university. I did that, I paid my tuition by myself with right. no support. That was the University of Kansas. Right? One at University of Kansas. When I came back home to do my youth service, he told me I will let you sleep in my boys' quarter, but that's the, ma that's the only support you're going to get from me. I'm mm -hmm. not going to pay for your feeding, you're not going to be on allowance, mm -hmm. you'll find your way. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. My entire career has been that way. Right. So, uh, you know, I understand what it is in the country when they say you have to find 500,000 or 1 million naira for mm -hmm. rent up front, mm -hmm. right? Especially mm -hmm. after getting married and having children, mm -hmm. there's that pressure now. Um, and when you buy a car, whether it's Tukumbo or a new car, you have to finance that with cash up mm -hmm. front. Nobody's putting you on a car repayment uh, program or anything yeah. like that, mm -hmm. as it is in the West. Now, what Mr. President is promising in practical terms is he said, look, because we've removed the subsidy, because mm -hmm. we are no longer subsidizing sharp practice in the foreign exchange markets, mm -hmm. what we've been able to do over the course of the last eight to nine months is to store up some treasury, right? Mm -hmm. Store up the savings, uh, essentially, so mm -hmm. that when we are ready and positioned to, for example, uh, introduce the consumer credit system, mm -hmm. we have a financing base on which we can actually deliver the resources that need to be delivered to the families who need it the most. Mm -hmm. Now, how this is going to work is uh, we are working very closely with the Central Bank of Nigeria to introduce new incentives to the banking industry mm. uh, to essentially free up uh, you know, lending, and we're talking about trillions of Naira now, okay. uh, free up lending, steer it toward the lower income and middle income households of our nation, which are obviously in the tens of millions. Mm. What the, the idea behind that is uh, one of the major challenges with, for example, starting an automobile production facility in Nigeria is the question of demand, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm Volkswagen and I want to put a plant somewhere in Enugu or Lagos or somewhere, and I want to employ Nigerians to build out these cars, once I build out these cars, there is a there is a 0.001% of the population that can afford to buy these cars up front in cash. Mm -hmm. Therefore, demand is, is low mm -hmm. because the people who would ordinarily patronize these cars can't afford them. Mm -hmm. What we are now doing is bridging the gap. We're saying we are incentivizing those who are going to supply mm -hmm. the new manufacturers that will be coming in because they know now that through a consumer credit system, through a, 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 you know, a, a, the availability of a credit facility, to the Nigerian consumer who's on a salary of 100,000 or 200,000 Naira a month, a civil mm -hmm. servant, mm -hmm. we can now say, okay, bring your, bring your balance sheet. Let's see the last five years, your bank statement. Mm -hmm. Let's see what your inflows are on a monthly basis. We can, based on what, you've, what we've seen, mm -hmm. we know that you have an inflow of approximately 250,000 Naira a month consistently mm -hmm. over the course of the last five years. So there's predictability now as we look to, up to the future. Mm -hmm. Based on that, 
uh, history now, mm. we can uh, we can safely say as a bank that we will give you a single digit uh, you know uh, a, a car note or in, uh, you know uh, lending facility mm. for that car payment, mm -hmm. where we can pay the uh, manufacturer mm. for the car, right? And then you can you can provide us a payment of say if you're on two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month, you can afford to pay fifty thousand dollars a month. Mm. So you have the car today, you're driving it today, you're enjoying mm. it today but it's not killing your bottom line. You're mm -hmm. still able to pay your child's school fee. You're still able to ensure that there's food on the table mm -hmm. within your legitimate salary. That is life changing. Mm -hmm. And what it also does is aside from changing, entirely transforming the quality of life of the average Nigerian citizen, mm -hmm. what it also does is it incentivizes the, uh, the car manufacturer to come in because now you have millions of Nigerians that have now been added to your pool of potential buyers because mm -hmm. there's a credit system that actually functions well. Then on the other side of that, you have you have you've created the incentive for supply by creating a pool of demand. The demand is coming from these Nigerians who can now use the credit system to access these cars. The same works in housing, mm -hmm. where under the Buhari administration, one of the things we found out is if you remove the profit incentive from the housing industry, I'm mm -hmm. talking about government now. Government mm -hmm. comes in and says, our only motive, we're not trying to make money from Nigerians, mm -hmm. our only motive is to supply social housing for Nigerian families. Mm -hmm. We found that if you remove the profit margin, remove the profit motive, mm -hmm. we can build a three bedroom bungalow for a family of five or six mm -hmm. uh, at the cost of, at that time it was two million, now with devaluation it's probably four million. Mm -hmm. But the idea is with four million naira, we can construct a three bedroom house, meaning that if you have a salary of 250,000 or 300,000 naira a month, we can actually put you on a 10 year repayment plan mm -hmm. where you can afford to pay 50,000 naira a month over the course of you know 10 years or whatever the case may be and have a three bedroom house that you're living in today, enjoying with your family today. You're removing the, the, the pressure to pay upfront for rent mm -hmm. because it's your own house. Mm -hmm. You are paying toward ownership. Mm -hmm. So it's what we call rent to own. It's a monthly payment that appears like a monthly rent payment, mm -hmm. but you're actually paying toward the ownership that eventually you will have to yourself. Mm -hmm. For us, the consumer credit system, if there was what we call the magic bullet solution, the mm. thing that Nigerians can look forward to and say, okay, mm. yes, we're enduring this moment. Yes, we are barely surviving through this moment, mm. but there's that light at the end of the tunnel. That consumer credit system is the light at the end of the tunnel, and that's what we want Nigerians to understand. Uh, I want to talk about the currency crisis, because when people want to point to how bad things have gone, right. that's a very easy one to no, do. Of course. I was reading the Economic Intelligence Unit issued a report, mm -hmm. you know, the AP's analyst issued a report, mm -hmm. looking at a report by SBM Intelligence, which is a local you know, agency, the University of Oxford, mm -hmm. you know, uh, analyst issued a report. And you know, first, it's important to note that at the time when the president announced this policy, mm -hmm. it was popular. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on Twitter, for instance, you know, which is where the digital elite congregate, right. there was a consensus that the Naira needed to be floated. Right. Yeah, right. Um, it's just like first subsidy. Almost every presidential candidate, you know, ran on this policy of first subsidy needs to go. You know, so this wasn't a. So when people now try to dissociate themselves from this, that oh, this shouldn't have been done, is dishonest because I know that many of the elites said this was the proper policy yeah but now nine months have passed right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it doesn't look mm -hmm. like it was a proper policy is this one of those situations like we've had with the american elite insisting that there was going to be a recession mm -hmm. under joe biden last year mm -hmm. didn't happen mm -hmm. yeah it's one of those situations where a new government mm -hmm. listened to its economic elites but they made a mistake you know mm -hmm. and if that's the case, how do we come out of this morass? Do, does the government think that this policy was a mistake? I mean, the CBN governor was in the media mm -hmm. this week, and you know, I can't speak to his state of mind, right. but he did, he did feel like he was a bit overwhelmed with the scale of the slide. <laughs> and I mean, again, I can't speak to his no, state of mind, please, but please. that's what he felt like. Right, right. And so it just has a sense that, okay, this was a mistake. You know, mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. thought it was the right thing to do, right. but it turned out not to be the right thing to do, sure. in which case. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask about the ECOWAS, you know, statement you received yesterday. We've seen from yesterday, that this is a president that is not unwilling to say, look, we were wrong, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, let's change this policy. Is that something we should do with this currency crisis? Well, for, frankly, let me speak to that. I think uh, the ECOWAS position of... Uh, his Excellency, Mr. President, who serves as the chairman of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, um, is not necessarily 
uh, some form of admission that he got it wrong initially. I think what it is is a recognition of um, contemporary challenges and difficulties that mm -hmm. weren't necessarily present when the first decision was made. And mm -hmm. so I think any uh, rational and responsible leader mm -hmm. uh, who has any sense of empathy and compassion for the plight of millions of people affected by these decisions mm -hmm. would say, based on um, very malleable circumstances mm -hmm. that are changing day to day, mm -hmm. Uh, some of which go far beyond the region with respect to energy costs and food yeah, costs and yes, things like this. Yes, that uh, that uh, you know that uh, there should be an amendment uh, on on grounds of compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe he was he had the will uh, and and the character to say I'm ready to to make this amendment for the sake of these people. Mm -hmm. And this is not in any way uh, an affirmation or a justification or a validation rather. Mm -hmm. Uh, of the decision taken by the military junta in Niger to do what they did. Mm -hmm. uh, now, with that said, uh, I think that um, with respect to the CBN and how uh, the CBN governor, uh, what his general uh, you know, body language is or spoken word, what it uh, is uh, indicating, I think he's been very clear on more than one occasion, including his most recent statements, uh, is about the fact that he has a great hope for the Nigerian economy mm -hmm. and a great hope that the nation's financial system will be not just better than, uh, not just the way it was before, mm -hmm. but much better than it was before because he's putting in place uh, guardrails and standards uh, that would, uh, but through legislation, that will be very difficult to reverse. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we will never again, after Godwin Mafela's era, have a situation where a day-to-day -day CBN governor is going to chair any board of directors. That's mm -hmm. never going to happen mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. But I also think that once we are able to establish the guardrails, mm -hmm. that even the most sophisticated uh, networks of elites will not be able to work through and work around, uh, we are going to see not just a, a, a gross appreciation of the currency from where it currently is, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to have a long-term uh, predictability and stability mm -hmm. uh, of the value of our currency. And that's what we're working toward. Yes, on the one hand, we're, I, and I want Nigerians to appreciate this, that on the one hand, we're dealing with a, 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 a crisis of this moment mm -hmm. that we have to solve in this moment. Mm -hmm. But the way we solve it in this moment is not dealing with just this moment. Mm -hmm. our, our, and th this is the position of CBN Governor Cardoso as well as President Bola Tinubu is what, as we're dealing with the crisis of this moment, we're dealing with it in the context of a long-term solution mm -hmm. so that we never have to go back to this moment. The, the government is definite that this policy is not a, was not a mistake. Oh, absolutely. He, he, look, he, I think he just said it about two days ago mm -hmm. that there's no going back on this. Yeah. The, yeah. Whatever it takes, no yeah. matter what it takes, we have to break through this, this ceiling on our collective destiny. We yeah. all know that this is a problem. We know that the reason, for example, why we cannot attract large-scale foreign direct investment mm -hmm. is because foreign investors look at our country and they say, well, you have budgets that are totally constrained mm -hmm. by these massive uh, subsidies, not just on electricity, but on fuel, on, uh, on uh, the foreign exchange market, for example. Uh, and as a result of that, you're, they're never going to be, Nigeria is never going to be able to make the investments in the soft and hard infrastructure that's required to ensure that cost of business goes down for us, that uh, we have, uh, you know, access to foreign exchange liquidity to ensure that we can actually repatriate our funds, uh, you know, in, in, in foreign exchange when we make it. If we don't have those fundamentals, we can't even begin to invest. And without investment, you can't get hundreds of millions of jobs that are going to be required for the Nigeria of today and mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. Government, we, as we all know, will never have enough money to create enough jobs for the, for the number of Nigerians that require them. It is always going to be dependent the on the sector. private sector and foreign investment. Mm -hmm. If foreign investment isn't coming in because you have these fundamentals of budgets that are drained by subsidies and you're unable to invest in the things you need to invest in to bring in these investments, then you have this wicked self-fulfilling cycle that just mm -hmm. continues and continues until you break that cycle. Where we are right now is we are in the labor pains of the process of breaking that cycle. But once it's broken, the baby's born and everybody can now laugh and love the baby, right? We don't see the baby yet, but we're experiencing the labor. And that's mm -hmm. a tough place. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing it, but you're, you're feeling it. You're mm -hmm. feeling the first part of it. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. And it's a very difficult part of the process to communicate and to seek empathy for yeah. and to seek. It's very difficult. Yeah. This is where we are. And we are appealing to Nigerians, begging Nigerians 
to just hang on a bit longer. Help is on the way. Okay. It's on the way. Do we have a time frame for how long this hardship will last? I, I think it, it depends on what element of it you're looking at. So for example, mm -hmm. uh, I think what we can expect in the immediate term is the launch of both the student loan program as well as the consumer credit uh, program, mm -hmm. which is the, the main one. Then in addition to that, we have uh, cash transfers going out uh, to, I believe, about uh, 15 million mm -hmm. households, yeah. 25,000 naira a month. Certainly that will go a long way to... So it's 15 million households, not 15 million people. Yeah, if you have 15 million households. Right. 25,000 naira per household, yes. 15 million households. If you extrapolate, extrapolate that to people, mm -hmm. an average of a family of four, you're looking at 60, 70 million uh, approximately. Mm -hmm. If it's a family of five or six, it's even more than that. So that's basically what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have the BOI getting ready to release, uh, I believe about 75 billion or so. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, it's actually 500 billion if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, we can fact check that yes. after the show. Right. Uh, Nigerians can do that. but. Uh, the BOI is going to be releasing, uh, I believe, well over 100 billion for MSMEs across the country in digital transfers to ensure that they have uh, at least some support during this difficult time as well, mm -hmm. while we are launching the consumer credit system and the student loan program. Mm -hmm. So look, help is on the way. Uh, for us, we are uh, appealing to our people to uh, be patient, knowing that if we have a nine month pregnancy, uh, they've certainly gone through the first two trimesters. Mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of in that last leg now yes. where, you know, the help is actually in front of us now because we've, we use the first two trimesters to store up the finance mm -hmm. and to position ourselves and bring stability to the system, mm -hmm. which is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. In the final trimester, they should be able to see signs that indeed there's a head coming out of the womb, there's mm -hmm. a shoulder coming out, mm -hmm. and then you have the baby. Um, so now with respect to the currency, mm -hmm. I think there are a few other tangential elements that are very important to okay. mention. Okay. I always said this when I was working for President Mohamedou Buhari that he's not going to get the credit for a lot of the things that he actually did because many of them were futuristic. Okay. But one of the things that I think President Bola Tinubu is very grateful for uh, that his predecessor uh, did do was creating a structure of refinery rehabilitation that was atypical, that was not um, status quo. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, Nigerians are used to federal government spending billions of dollars on the turnaround uh, on, of, our main, of our refineries, which never actually happen, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a Nigerian president will say, okay, I'm going to, through the NNPC, give a $1 billion contract to this Nigerian contractor. I'm not going to name any names. They're mm -hmm. real people who got these contracts, mm -hmm. but they get this contract, they would swallow the money, maybe spend $10 million out of $1 billion to do some show me work, mm -hmm. right, that ended up in nothing. Uh, and then it would be forgotten about. Now, what President Buhari did, uh, uh, to his credit, almost very few people understand the nuance of this, is he said, we're not going to do it that way. Even mm -hmm. though we have the billion to do it, we're not going to do it that way. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to a Frexham bank in Cairo, mm -hmm. and we are going to submit to them a, 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 a business case mm -hmm. saying that we want you to bring some of your finance to counterpart our finance mm -hmm. to ensure that this gets done. Because if we bring you in to this, now we're mandated to ensure that this sees the end of the uh, end of the, uh, we get to the end of the tunnel, that mm -hmm. this actually results in a working refinery that can pay back the facility that you're gonna give us. Mm -hmm. Because you have to have a business case that works. So a Frexham bank now says, okay, uh, you want to bring a business case? We are going to only do this if you bring a world-class reputable contractor that we know mm -hmm. has done it in other parts of the world and has the capacity to do this. Mm -hmm. So President Buhari says, great, that's, that's what I want. So it, they now essentially agree on a, uh, a contractor, Technimon SP of Italy. Mm -hmm. They've built uh, refineries, I think, on four or five different continents. Um, and so we get Technimon. Then because our business case was good, meaning that we said Technimon is in place, we're going to do this refinery rehabilitation or reconstruction over the course of the next four years. Mm -hmm. But after this four year reconstruction, we will be able to produce this many barrels of refined PMS, aviation fuel, diesel and other products. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we can assure you that we'll be able to pay back your money according to this timeline. So mm -hmm. it's all mapped out in advance on the basis of that, because Mr. President, President Buhari did it that way mm -hmm. uh, in the early part of this year. Uh, the, the first phase has, ta has taken off, meaning that the first phase is done, mm -hmm. meaning that now they've started up the refinery. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 450,000 barrels uh, from Shell have arrived at Portaco Refinery mm -hmm. for the refinement of those products. Mm -hmm. 
the second phase, I think, ends at the, begin at the, at the end of this year, end of 2024, okay. which is going to be approximately, uh, I think it's about 100 and something thousand additional barrels, the f 120 or 130,000 barrels mm -hmm. that will go with the uh, existing 60. So you're looking at 200,000 barrels per day capacity of refining mm -hmm. at the end of this year that wouldn't have been possible if President Buhari had not taken the unique approach he took mm -hmm. to the refinery main, uh, re uh, rehabilitation. So that's that. Now, the reason why it bears into our conversation about the future and about mm -hmm. you know how we're going to bring some sukkah to our people mm -hmm. is that right where our problem now is liquidity, foreign exchange liquidity, yes. right? What we're going to be able to do is now that we have these refineries, whether it's Dangote's mm -hmm. refinery, which, by the way, again, this is another uh, innovative stroke from President Buhari he's not really getting credit for, is that he insisted on a 20% ownership stake in the Dangote, Dangote refinery, refinery owned by the NNPC. Yes. So now if a Dangote refinery is making $30 billion, for example, profit in a year, 20% mm -hmm. of that's coming to the Federal Republic of Nigeria to mm -hmm. support our budgets and to finance infrastructure, etc. So that's a good thing mm -hmm. now. But in addition to that, what we're saving is the, the hundreds of millions of dollars a year that we were paying on, uh, paying for uh, the transportation of refined PMS from foreign refineries onto that's our right. shores yeah. is gone. Mm -hmm. The uh, foreign exchange that we would have to pay out for the, refine, for the refined PMS, we're no longer having to pay. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, you have removed the, uh, the foreign exchange expenditures mm -hmm. that you were expending. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you are now bringing in foreign exchange inflows mm -hmm. that you are now accruing as a result of the fact that you are selling your indigenous refined PMS to other countries. Uh, what is our local demand in the country? We have about 450,000, uh, 450, I believe, barrels uh, satisfies our national aggregate local demand for PMS, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Dangote alone is, is, uh, six, uh, is 650,000 barrels per day. The, uh, the Portaco refinery on its own is 200,000 barrels per day. Mm -hmm. We have BUA, Abdul Samad Rabiu, of BUA uh, building a 200,000 barrels per day for, uh, refinery in Akwaibom right now. Mm -hmm. And we're already at an advanced stage of completion through the same mechanisms I mentioned that uh, President, President Buhari took in place for the Kaduna refinery and the Delta refinery, Wari refinery, mm -hmm. uh, that will add another 200,000 to the, to the nationally owned refinery production, uh, refined PMS production stock. Mm -hmm. Because it's so far above mm -hmm. our aggregate national demand, mm -hmm. that's, for, that's all for export. Yeah. And we're exporting not the Naira, we're exporting in dollars. dollars. They have to pay us dollars. Yeah. That's coming to us. Yeah. So there is a lot over the course of the next 12 to 16 months that will dramatically change the, the picture with respect to our foreign exchange inflows that don't have anything to do with our export of raw crude. Because we're going to export our raw crude, we're going to export our gas and all of that. We're going to still be doing some of that, but we're going to earn the foreign exchange. But now the, where the value is, is in these processed refined products, just like every other sector. Mm -hmm. Refining, uh, re refined products is where you make your money, is where you make your Forex. That's what we're gonna be able to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you talk about the ability to support a stable currency that mm -hmm. is far appreciated beyond what we're seeing today, that is the how-to, that is the road to that place. And we have that, we are on that road. We're not off it, we're not veering, we're on that road right now. Mm -hmm. So when we're asking Nigerians to just Hang in there, hang in there. We're not saying hang in there because we're in government and we want you to like us. Mm -hmm. We're saying hang in there because we can see that there is an end to this. Uh, but from my perspective now, from this seat, be patient with us. I'm working with a man who I can personally vouch for mm -hmm. in the sense that I know that he's going to bed at 2, 3 a.m. every single night, including Sundays. Mm -hmm. He's waking up at 7, 8 every single morning, including Sundays, opening his files, working into the late night when no one's there to say anything good or bad about him. He's doing the work. Mm -hmm. He's a workaholic, and he's doing it all to build a country that is reflective of the progressive, advanced, developed, and prosperous society that he's envisioned, the same way he did in Lagos. And I'm asking our people on the basis of that privileged knowledge that I have, working closely with him every day, to support this man. He means well. This is not me, a spokesman, getting his salary by doing a job. I'm speaking to you from the soul of Ajuri Ngalali. This is me telling you what I see in this man. And I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that Nigerians will give him the support he needs to do the important work that he's going to do on all of our behalves. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a, this has been a very engaging conversation, very, the best kind of conversation. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much.